We're looking at a five-year-old Samsung dryer, and as with all dryers, you always clean out the lint filter between loads. This one is rather difficult because that's just the way Samsung is at times. It opens up, you clean out the lint, you put it back in. But now, as I've noted with my LG dryer, so now with the unit disassembled, we can see further inside and boy, is that dirty. There can be a buildup of lint beyond this unit inside. And sometimes it's easy to get in there with your hand. You can try cleaning some of that out, but sometimes you have to take off the whole front panel. So we're gonna see if Samsung has improved on that. We're gonna take off this front panel and see if there's a buildup of lint on the inside. First thing we need to do is unplug the dryer so the unit is not energized. Then we'll need to remove the top lid. On the back of the unit, there are two screws. You can use a number two Phillips or a 10 millimeter nut driver. You could also use a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter tool. I have happen to have an electric driver for that function. And so I will use that. And it just makes removal really fast. The lid should slide back. This one doesn't want to budge, so I'm just taking a piece of plastic. I could try using a screwdriver in here, but I don't want to damage the finish. So, a piece of plastic is what you want, and basically I'm just pushing against the lid, and this lid can now slide back up and out of the way. With the lid off, right behind the front panel are two screws. You'll need to remove those. They're Phillips number two. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or an electric driver as I'm doing. We grab the front panel, start lifting towards us. There is a cable connection that you have to be aware of. And then all I am doing is there's two tabs down at the bottom. So you have to sort of be careful that you don't snap those. But I'm lifting up from the bottom of the unit here and tilting back So to get this off, I needed to push up from the bottom and then tilt back and up. And I think you could see that there's two guide clips here. Here's two hooks here where it catches at the front of the bulkhead and then two more guides. So it's basically just being held in by friction. Now we could disconnect the cables. Uh, there's one grab wrapped in green tape and then just another one clipped together. But I really don't need to do that for what we're doing. Actually, I didn't need to remove the three plastic screws up here because <clears throat> we're just dealing with the front end. If I were gonna work on the drum, take the drum out, put felt on it, put a new belt, then for that, I would need to take out this whole bracing part of it. But we just need to deal with the bulkhead. So on the bulkhead, we have one, two, three, four Phillips fasteners that need to come out. With these fasteners out of the way, we move down to the front of the bulkhead. We have one, two, three, four, I don't think these need to come out. Two, 
to note a difference in the size of the fasteners. The two thick ones came off the side, whereas the smaller ones came off the bottom. With the fasteners removed, there are two metal clips here and back here. And I believe all we have to do is just push down on it and it should release the bulkhead. The bulkhead tilts forward. You may want to close the door at that point. And then you should be able to lift up. There is a wire, one harness, that has to be disconnected. And in order to do that, you just pull straight out. And now we should be able to tilt forward and lift out the front bulkhead and door. With the bulkhead removed, we can see the drum and the inside of the unit. Ours has a bunch of cobwebs in it. And if you look inside, there is some lint along the bottom. And so we're going to vacuum that out. And now you'll notice that there are some screws here, here, uh, let's see. And then one here, which takes this cover off, which is where the lint, the air flows. You have the lint filter here, and then it goes through here. So there could be lint trapped in here. Plus it'll give us a view of the impeller to see if that's clogged up with lint. So these are just Phillips. So we'll take those off and see if we can get this cover off. And with the three fasteners removed, turns out that there's one more top dead center that looks like it needs to come out also. And as you can see, there's some lint build up, but really not much at all. There's some on the impeller, which that'll be easy to vacuum out. There's a big old goober of it right there. But overall, this is pretty clean considering that it's been in use for five years. Now we will just take the vacuum cleaner and uh, get rid of this lint. When you're done with your vacuuming, simply push this up over the rectangular box here. Line up the screws, one, two, three, four, and fasten those down. We'll take the door bulkhead, make sure it catches on these three metal tabs. It'll go in at an angle, catch the tabs, and then close up. Before closing off the bulkhead, make sure that you reconnect this one cable harness. And all you do is just push in, and now you're ready to continue pushing this up. There's a clip that's going to catch there, and one at this end. And then we'll apply our fasteners here, 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 and here. We now open the door and making sure that we use the bigger fasteners for the side. We attach those and then the smaller ones at the bottom. Don't forget to insert your lint filter. We grab the control panel. We tilt it back. We insert the guide pins in the appropriate holes. And 
make sure the wiring harness is connected. We did not disconnect it initially. Now, there are two pins here. They're gonna have to go here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lift up, go over that, and then gently come down so that it catches. And you'll know that it's caught when the sides are all nice and even. And it may take more than one attempt. Again, make sure those guide, those guide pins go in. Your seams along the front should be flush. And that way you know it's properly attached. And now we put in the fasteners that we did not need to take out. One goes at each end. As long as we have the top off, we might as well check the felt that's at both the back and the front of the drum. That's what it glides on. Connections are good. If your drum is not spinning, that's because this belt is probably broken. So you'd need to replace that. But this is where the belt goes. This one's in fine shape. Again, check, make sure that the felt on the front is nice and smooth and not torn and now we're ready to put on our lid. We place the top slightly offset then pull it forward and then we'll attach the last two fasteners to the back. The last thing we need to do is plug in the unit and we're ready to do the next load of laundry. If you found this video interesting or useful give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, Join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.